Hi guys, it's Jessica, and welcome to this edition of the Quotation Bank Revision Tutorials, designed to help you in preparation for your GCSE English Literature exams. In these videos, we take key scenes, themes and characters from the text, and provide a great model for how to go about analysing them precisely, and how to get the most out of them in an exam, as well as providing you with the framework for an excellent revision activity you can then do on your own. The Quotation Bank has guides for a variety of GCSE texts available on our website, Amazon or online, so go and have a look, as well as follow us on social media. And if you find this video useful, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe here on YouTube. Today we're looking at the idea of the co-mingled nature of good and evil within humanity that is depicted in Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde, and here's why. In recent years, some English literature GCSE exam questions have asked students to focus on areas of a set text that perhaps diverge from the main thematic or character-based concerns of the text. It is important to note that exam boards make explicit the fact that questions and extracts can come from anywhere in a text, therefore skipping over the seemingly insignificant is not necessarily a sensible idea. Learning time is limited, and it is logical to spend quality time on key sections of a text. To that end, we have provided brief analysis of insignificant scenes of significance, so that these scenes can be explored comprehensively, but efficiently. These scenes are useful for demonstrating whole text knowledge. Whilst key scenes are rich in material, these scenes are excellent for highlighting the development of theme or character and may awaken an examiner to a new and original point that hasn't been made by pupils again and again. So let's get to the analysis, starting with this key quotation. I have observed that when I wore the semblance of Edward Hyde, none could come near to me at first without a visible misgiving of the flesh. This, as I take it, was because all human beings, as we meet them, are commingled out of good and evil and Edward Hyde, alone in the ranks of mankind, was pure evil. One interpretation is that Jekyll and Hyde are not two people. There is only one Jekyll. Hyde does not exist as we might expect. He is Jekyll's utterance, a representation. Ironically, the tale is narrated through the cleverly named Mr Utterson, and most events are filtered through his character. Aside from epistolary sections of evidence, such as letters or Jekyll's final confession, it is important to note there is only ever Jekyll. Hyde never narrates, and we only get his opinion via reported speech or from Jekyll's perspective. It is the duality in man, the commingled, that Stevenson looks to explore, not duality as in two separate people. Even when Jekyll is in Hyde's form, he is still Jekyll, calling himself I. Contextually, the contemporary theories expounded by Cesare Lombroso would certainly apply here, with Hyde being presented as a dissipated atavist, meaning Hyde displays degenerative characteristics humankind was meant to have evolved from and discarded long ago. In this way, Stevenson reflects and taps into Victorian fears warning of degeneration, immorality and deviant sexuality. Stevenson continues the duality motif into the London setting. In this urban Gothic setting, such evil could be lurking around every cobbled street, behind any clean or brightly lighted house. Stevenson therefore presents the setting of London as a dark place both literally and metaphorically. Certainly, the introduction of the buildings in chapter 1, and not knowing where one ends and another begins, is representative of the duality of man, and foreshadows the inhabitants' traits. Indeed, the fact Hyde's building has no window highlights his inaccessibility and mystery, remaining in darkness at this point of the novel, symbolically enshrouded in the pall of fog. Furthermore, the door having no knocker, nor way of apparently being opened or called on from the outside, reflects Hyde's characterization as Jekyll's id, hidden away and repressed 
because of the conservative morals of Victorian society. Now, once you have got to grips with this material, it is important to make sure you know what to do with it in the exam, and we can certainly help you with that. The quotation bank is designed to make sure that every point you make in an essay clearly fulfils the assessment objectives an examiner will be using when marking your work. Every quotation comes with the following detailed material. Interpretation. The interpretation of each quotation allows you to fulfil assessment objective 1, responding to the text and giving an informed personal response. Techniques. Using subject-specific terminology correctly, in this case the literary devices used by Stevenson, is a key part of assessment objective 2. Analysis. We have provided as much analysis, assessment objective 2, as possible. It is a great idea to analyse the quotation in detail. You need to do more than just say what it means, but also what effect the language form and structure has on the reader. Use in essays on. Your answer needs to be focused to fulfil assessment objective 1. This section helps you choose relevant quotations and link them together for a stronger essay. That brings us to the end of our analysis for today. I hope you found it useful, and if you have, do give a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos from the Quotation Bank. Don't forget to check out our study guides, where we provide analysis of 25 key quotations, as well as being full of essay plans, revision activities and more. They're available from our website and other online stores, and follow us on social media. Send us a quotation and we'll try to help you out with your analysis. Thanks for listening and good luck with the...